thank you guys all for joining us. We have a good group of people here and we're just going to go ahead and get started. So my name's Heather. I'm a senior support engineer for CATI and this is the monthly straight from support webinar. If you're joining us again, thanks so much. And if you're, this is your first time joining us for straight from support. I hope you enjoy it and come back next month. So to get started, just a little recap on what this webinar is. Every month we take three questions that we've gotten in support or that we get in support a lot. We go ahead and answer them for you guys. We give you some cool tips and tricks to use with SOLIDWORKS. And then at the end, um, we'll answer anything that you guys have for us there. Like I said, my name's Heather. I'm a senior support engineer and joining me with joining me today is Justin Maxwell and he's one of our support engineer managers. Justin, why don't you uh, just give them a few like sentences about yourself? Yeah, thanks Heather. Uh, yeah, so like Heather said, my name is Justin. I'm one of the technical support managers uh, here at CATI and I am from Cleveland, Ohio. So if anybody's from around here, uh, I, th I know we have customers all across the country. So it's uh, sometimes interesting to hear what people are when we're on the phone with them. So I'm from Ohio um, and I've been in tech support for going on 10 years now. So uh, it's an interesting time right now and we've got some unique questions because of the, the whole coronavirus uh, pandemic. So uh, we're here to help. Thanks so much, Justin. And yeah, with this, we actually, I do have um, part of my question actually ties into questions we're getting from people working on another machine. I know Justin's question is all focused on how you can work from home, but just a little recap on the questions. Mine's importing and exporting issues you're having with SOLIDWORKS. I have a few case studies that we have where people are having import export issues due to settings or anything like that. And we'll take a look at why those might happen. Justin's going to help you out and tell you how you can work from home with SOLIDWORKS and give you a lot of good tips and tricks on that. And then I'm going to jump in at the end and talk about how you can make a mirrored part in SOLIDWORKS and talk about a few different ways we can get mirrored geometry in SOLIDWORKS. So I'm going to jump in and we'll just start on our first topic. So the first topic I have for you guys is why is my file exporting slash importing incorrectly? And I kind of have four parts to this. So the first part I'm going to cover is just the first case study that made me think, you know what, this would be a great case study for straight from support. And it was this tech support question. So I had a customer, they had, let's call, let's, we have a box. It has two parts. They go to save as step file. And when they open up the step file, they want to check it to make sure it's okay before they send it on to whoever they're sending it to the step file for. It looks like this. So why is my step file just losing parts within uh, when I go to save it as a step file? And I'm going to caveat this with this customer was using 2018 and I found this issue happening with 18 and 19. But so I took a whole assembly file. So this was a SOLIDWORKS assembly went and saved it as a step and I got this. And the reason that this was happening, let me pull that over for you guys. So if we look at the part files here, these were the names of the part files. We had box, which was the total assembly. We had box, which was that bottom box piece. And then we had lid, which is that top lid piece. So we had box, box and lid. And this actually ties into why this was happening. Because another thing that I have, I have my extensions turned off for known types. So I have my extensions turned off. I don't want to see what the extension is if it's a known type. And we found that in 2018 and 2019, when you go to save an assembly, so I'm going to open up SOLIDWORKS 2018. I'll open up my box assembly. I have my assembly called box. I have a part called box and this part called lid. When you go to save it and you save it as a step file, if you have your extensions turned off and go and try and open up that step file, you'll only get the one box piece. And this is because it's getting confused and it's seeing this box piece right here, converting that and not converting the whole assembly. It was a really easy way to turn this back on. So if you want to go to view, and this is in Windows 10, but you also have your folder options in uh, Windows 7 as well, and go to options. I'm just going to change the folder options. And down here in view, I'm going to 
uncheck hide extensions for known types. When I hit apply, this will cause, so notice here now it's box.sldasm, box.sldprt. So now when I go and convert this again, it's going to convert the whole assembly because it's differentiating the part types. So it was just kind of a cool case that happened. Um, it was an interesting solution and reason it was happening. So the solution would be either to make it like box assemb and have the part name box or just throw on your extension so you can see that there. So that was just the case that kind of got me started on the import export issues. And I actually got a few of them over the past month that I want to cover with you. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at my import export options in terms of the settings. So you guys know when you go into SOLIDWORKS, you guys have a lot of options and uh, we've talked about these options and a lot of other straight from support, but I want to focus on the export options here because there are a few issues here that I saw kind of tie into some issues people were having. And I just want to go quick through some what these export options do. So really with the export options, this is saying when I export out as different things, this is the settings that it's going to take forth. And you can read them. most of them are pretty self-explanatory. I found I had a few questions of people who they are working with DXFs and they wanted to export their part out as a DXF. So I'm going to open up a part, but they are noticed they weren't getting the same settings boxes that they were getting before on their old computer. They're working on their home computer, not their work computer, and they are missing some settings. So if we go to our export and I look at my DXF DF, uh, DWG, it was this custom mapping. So this allows you to pick um, the custom mapping going from SOLIDWORKS to DXF DWG. So if you ever notice, hey, there's a setting here and I normally get this pop-up box whenever I go to save as, but it's not looking here. I'd really suggest going and looking in these export file options to get them to open. And I'm going to make a note here that a lot of times you have to have a part open to see them. So if I don't have anything open in SOLIDWORKS, I don't see all of the different types of exports that I can do. It really cuts down the list. So for instance, this is what the list looks like if I have no files open. And when I do have files open, I just get a few more options thrown in there depending on what type of file I have open. And the last thing I wanted to touch on with the export options, this was a pretty cool one. So if you guys have ever used simulation, you know, you guys have the option to export out reports from whatever simulation you've made. So if I made a simulation, I want to export out all the results. I can export a result and I get a nice word file. Well, someone noticed that their Word file, all of the pictures were for some reason in black and white, even though their results were in color. This also had to do with the export options. So if you ever see that, you notice that that's happening. You go to your export options. Go to TIFF, PSD, JPEG, PNG. And most likely this image type is flipped over to black and white. Flip it back and all your reports will print color again. So because when SOLIDWORKS exports out these pictures and puts them in the report, they do them in those file formats, that affects how your report looks when you go to put it in SOLIDWORKS. So that was a pretty cool case that we had got solved that way. All right, so that's what I had for export. What about importing? Well, when we import with SOLIDWORKS, we have the same types of options and I'm going to go here, but the biggest import option I see people talk about is this 3D interconnect. And if you guys have ever imported a part that has 3D interconnect turned on, you'll know that when you import it in, you get this little green check next to it. And I'm going to pull in an imported part to take a look at that. So I import in Step file. It opens up my step file. And I see this little arrow right here. What this means is that my part isn't actually getting turned into a SOLIDWORKS part. It's staying as that native step file type. That way, if someone makes a change to the step file in whatever type of program they had it, 
SOLIDWORKS will update it with that information. If I didn't want this, if I had 3D Interconnect turned on accidentally, I can, if I want it turned off all the time, just go up to my options, import and turn that guy off. If it's a one-time thing, you always have the option to right-click, dissolve the feature, and it will just turn it into a dumb solid imported part like we had before. So that's the one of the main things I see with 3D interconnect and people having problems with importing. Let's talk about two more tech support cases we get a lot having to do with imports. Uh, people will go and import in an assembly and they'll see this default templates are not valid. A lot of times it doesn't stop you from importing. It just lets you use a blank template, but what is this? Why is this happening? And how can I get it from stopping to pop up every time I try to import a file? It gets really annoying if I have 50 pieces in an assembly file. So that has to do with most likely if you've upgraded, I know I have four different versions of SOLIDWORKS on my machine, and sometimes those file locations can get a little bit confused. So what that has to do with is the default templates, your options, pointing to the correct location. So if you look right here, I'm looking in SOLIDWORKS 2018. My default templates are pointing to SOLIDWORKS 2017. When I uninstalled 2017 from my computer, I wiped all of those templates because I didn't think I needed them anymore. Now, whenever I try to open this, it's gonna tell me it doesn't have a valid template. So the way to go ahead and fix that is just to pick a template that does exist and it will change the file location there. So it's really simple and you can just throw correct templates and you'll never see that error message again. And then finally, this is a cool little trick with the 3D interconnect again that I found with a file import error. So if anybody's ever tried to import a file from a different file type, you had 3D interconnect turned off and you're getting a file import error. I found it really helpful actually to turn 3D interconnect back on let it import with 3D Interconnect and then dissolve the feature. I found it to let me um, like at least five times over the last month or so to allow me to import in a file that it was throwing errors on before. So that's just a little quick tip. If you ever run into this, it may not be that it's impossible to import. Try using our new tool, which is 3D Interconnect, to help you get that file imported. I'm just going to show you where that setting is one more time. So it's options import and turning on 3D interconnect. All right, guys, so that was this quick session on importing and exporting files. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys learned some tools that you can take forward with you. And with that, I'm gonna pass presenter over to Justin and he's gonna talk about how you can work from home in SOLIDWORKS. Awesome, thanks Heather. Yeah, that 3D Interconnect is, uh, is a pretty interesting topic. We have a lot of questions in the last couple of years about it because uh, it's a newer feature. So uh, a lot of people don't understand exactly what it does and the impact it has if you have that on or off. So that's a good thing to look into. If you ever have import issues, 3D Interconnect is probably the first thing that we do on support is just either turn it off or turn it on, <laughs> depending on what you have at the moment, because it can, it can change things a lot. So, all right, let me uh, show my screen here. And my topic that we're gonna be covering is uh, how can I work from home with SOLIDWORKS? So obviously right now, this is a huge major question uh, that we're about, what, a month and a half into or so of getting daily. So we hear from a ton of people that are either just now starting to work from home or uh, they've kind of worked around using SOLIDWORKS for a while and now they need to get the license or, or whatever. So there's a ton of different scenarios that maybe you need to now work from somewhere that's not your typical office. Right? So if you come to us and you, on support and you ask us how can you work from home with SOLIDWORKS, uh, the first thing that we need to figure out is what type of license you have. Uh, there are three main licenses for SOLIDWORKS, so if you're not aware, there are standalone licenses. These are uh, serial numbers that are assigned to a specific machine. So your work computer, uh, that's your serial number that's assigned to you and it's assigned to that computer itself. So that's a license file sitting on an actual computer and that's the standalone license. 
there's uh, another version of standalone called online licensing that will make things a little bit uh, easier. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that as well. And then there's the kind of the trickiest of the three types of licenses in this situation, and that's the network license. Uh, the reason that a network license is gonna be the trickiest situation is because to run SOLIDWORKS in a network uh, environment, you need to have a persistent connection to a server that's hosting those licenses. So if you need to now work from home, right, you don't have a persistent connection to that server and there's gonna be some issues. So uh, you've got some options and we're gonna go over what those, what those options would be in that situation. If you don't know what type of license you have, uh, it's actually really easy. All you have to do is check your serial number in SOLIDWORKS, so that's just hitting help about. And if your serial number uh, starts in either 9,000 or four zeros, then you know you have a single license. If there's a one, in those first four digits, so 9010 or 0010, then you know you have a network license. So uh, the other option, obviously, is just to call into technical support and we can help you uh, determine what the best uh, scenario is for you. All right, so let's talk about the standalone licenses and how you'd be able to work from home in that situation. The first question that I would ask is, are you able to bring that computer that you currently work in your office home, right? That would be the easiest solution by far is to take that computer and just uh, bring it home, right? That would have all your files on it. It would have that license, it would have everything. That's gonna be the simplest solution in, in that case. But your work computer most likely is a desktop or something that you can't bring. So the other, uh, the other alternative is instead of bringing that physical computer, home, you could instead just bring the license file, right? So that license file is that activation file. We can bring that uh, from your work computer to your home computer, assuming that that home computer is uh, able to run SOLIDWORKS and it's on the internet, right? Uh, there's a bunch of ways of doing that, but the easiest way is to just go back to that work computer and open up SOLIDWORKS. And in SOLIDWORKS, all you have to do is go up to the top and hit help. In, under licenses, you're going to hit deactivate, and that would remove that standalone license, that activation file from that computer to allow you to then activate it on another computer. So you would need to install SOLIDWORKS on that secondary computer and then activate it, assuming your work one is deactivated. Uh, if you do have any troubles with that, it is very easy for us uh, as, as a reseller to uh, help that process. We can deactivate a computer remotely if we need to, or if, say you're trying to go from one to the other and it's just not working, or you're getting error messages. Uh, that's something we can very simply assist with. So just uh, just give us a call if that doesn't work for, for any reason. So standalone licenses, very, very easy, right? You can work from home, no problem. If you're in that standalone situation, you either just need to get the license home or the computer, if that's possible. Even easier is if you try to use an online license. So an online license is something that you can set up uh, for a standalone license. And that's the whole purpose of what an online license is, is to be able to work from wherever. When you open up SOLIDWORKS, assuming that you're on the internet, all you have to do is log in using your name and password or your email and password, and it will pull the license from the internet immediately. When you close SOLIDWORKS, it will release it. The cool thing about that is that means multiple houses or multiple people could share that same account and whoever logs in at the time can use that online license. It's not tied to a specific computer, it's tied to a login username and password. So uh, that's, that's kind of the best case scenario is if you have an online license, all you have to do is log in to, to any place, right? So. Uh, in this case, if you had coworkers and you needed to share a license with them, you could just have them log in from a different computer and they'd be able to use that license. Right. Online licenses are pretty cool uh, during non-quarantine times because that means that you could, uh, you could be traveling, uh, you know, at an airport or a coffee shop or something like that and be able to log in and just use SOLIDWORKS wherever you are. 
and not have to worry about transferring in and deactivating and stuff like that. Uh, but in, in these situations that we are now, where most people are completely separate from each other, it's an easy way to share licenses. So that's kind of kind of a neat perk of using online licensing. If you ever want to switch from standalone to online licensing, that's something that's very simply done. All you have to do is go out to my.solidworks.com and then browse to the admin portal. And I can show you here. Uh, here's mysolidworks.com. Uh, all you need to do is uh, your serial number to create a user account, as you can see, uh, that I have here. And under the profile up at the top right, you hit admin portal. That'll give you access to all the serial numbers that your company has. And it'll allow you to, uh, if, you're, if you're the admin, assign assets to specific people. So uh, you would assign a serial number to you and then that would give you the ability to uh, to use it online. So all that stuff is in the admin portal. We also have blogs on, on this. So uh, if you look at the CATI blog website, we've got plenty of information of how to convert a standalone to an online. Uh, and obviously we can help you out as well. All right, so I would say even easier than standalone licenses is the online license. You just move to the other machine and log in. So the tricky one, like I said, is the network license. So what options do we have? The first option is to borrow a license. So what borrowing is, is opening up the license manager on the server, or I'm sorry, on your client computer in your work office, going to the borrow tab and borrowing that license. The issue here is that it's limited to 30 days. That's the max that SolidWorks allows you to have. So if you're traveling or if you're gonna be away from the office, that's what that borrow is for. In this situation where people are at home, this would require you to borrow that license from the office and then bring your computer home and you'd have that license for 30 days. Now I did add a note that says without increase in limit. The reason I added that is because of these times uh, and all the quarantine and stuff that's going on, we can get that license uh, limit of 30 days increased. So if you, uh, if you call to technical support, we are able to request SolidWorks to, uh, to increase that um, in this situation. So it's not a typical thing, but it's something that we can do because of uh, SolidWorks understands obviously the circumstances that people are in, and we don't necessarily want to be the reason that you have to go to the office every 30 days, right? To, uh, to re-borrow the license. So, so just give us a call if you want that 30 days increased. If that's not a problem, then that's gonna be your easiest solution is borrowing the license from the SNL. The second option that you have is using a VPN connection. So a lot of people have VPNs. This is a, a virtual network that you can set up between your work environment and the home environment. So if you're in any location, you can open up that VPN and your computer assumes that it's connected to the network. That means that you can pull a license and you can use SolidWorks like normal. Uh, the, the issue here is you do need to stay connected uh, while you're using it because you need that persistent connection. So if your VPN gets turned off or you cut out, you only, got, you only have about 10 minutes until it kicks you off and, and says you can't use the license anymore. Uh, so, so you have to make sure that you stay connected during use of SolidWorks if you are using VPN. VPN is super important because that's the easiest way that you get access to your files as well, right? If your files are on some network drive in your, in your office and you don't have access to that server from home, the only way to get them is to use that VPN connection. So this would not only get you the license, but also access to all your files and things like that. And then the third option is, this is something special that Salaris released. I, we call it a COVID license, um, but this is a temporary license that SolidWorks is issuing right now for anybody that needs it. So if you call uh, your reseller, uh, assuming it's CATI, we will just go out and get that COVID license for you. Um, the turnaround is a day or two. We'll get that license uh, issued to you, and then we'll walk you through getting that activated on your computer. So it's a completely separate license of SolidWorks. It won't pull from the SNL. It won't limit the amount. Um, just ask us for it, and we can get that. Again, this is a 30-day license, kind of like the borrowing, so there's a limit, but we can renew it 
uh, every 30 days is what they're telling us. So all of the licenses right now are expiring probably end of this month. We're probably going to have a ton of renewals coming in the next couple of days from customers uh, needing an additional 30 days. Uh, so so we're we're prepared for that. And if you have a COVID license, you've probably gotten an email from us that we've, we warned everybody that, uh, hey, just remember that this is expires and you need to ask us to uh, renew it if you need. All right. So those are the three options for using a network license. If you want a good slide to maybe screenshot to show these options, uh, then that's the, uh, the next slide. Oh, and here's an important note. So you might be tempted to connect with the VPN and then borrow because you have direct connection to that server, but we are told not to do that. And, uh, and that's because it can, license can get stuck or broken. So you do not want to mix VPN connections and borrowing. Uh, if you borrow, you have to do that from the actual office network, not from a virtual network. So important note there. All right. So a network license, we can work from home as well. Uh, if you want to see, like I said, a, a nice screenshot slide, basically of showing what your options are. Again, if you have a if you have a standalone license, you can either bring your PC home or transfer the license from one computer to another. If you are online licensing, you can either again bring that PC home, but also just log in on any PC, and then you can grab that license. And then if you're on a network, again you can borrow, you can use a VPN, or you can request that special uh, COVID license. So I know that a lot of people have a, a questions about working from home. Uh, so I kind of gathered the, the most common ones that people come back with with that information. Uh, the first one is what if I use PDM? So a PDM is our database of files. The only way to connect remotely to PDM is to use a VPN connection. If a VPN connection is slow for you, then what we, rec we are recommending right now is you connect with VPN, you get all the files that you need into your local cache in PDM, and then you work offline. So you can you can work offline at any point in PDM and it keeps all the files in your local cache. That would be the way of using PDM. It'd be basically the same thing as if you just needed access to files in general, right? The only way to get access is to use some type of virtual network to, uh, to get access. Uh, what if you are a student or educator, right? That's a different type of license than standalone online and network. Uh, there is a special link uh, and just call call us and we can give you that link to request a student or educator license for this situation again for the the coronavirus situation there's a special license specifically for students and educators and uh, we can get that to you no problem uh, how do I know if my home PC will work for SOLIDWORKS that is a huge concern right now a lot of people are calling in uh, maybe their monitors aren't working or their graphics cards aren't good enough or things like that. Uh, the biggest thing that we would do is just go to SolidWorks.com, look in the requirements, um, make sure that your computer is okay. A lot of things are going to work differently in the home, uh, on a home like personal computer than a workstation. Uh, graphics would be the biggest thing. So uh, it's not it's not usually that SolidWorks doesn't work. But it's that things might be uh, might be appearing differently than they did in the work environment. So that is definitely a situation that we might have to tackle. And if you run into any other problems at all, uh, the solution would be to call us. Right, call your reseller, call support. We're answering uh, many questions every day about working from home, and we've pretty much tackled every circumstance. So if there is a situation that's unique to you, we'll figure it out. But most likely, we've seen it before, and we we know the the best solution for you. So. Uh, any other questions, go ahead and fill it in the chat, and then we'll get to them at the uh, end of the webinar. But uh, that's all I've got. So, Heather, I think it's uh, it's back to you. Thanks so much, Justin. All right, yeah, the work from home stuff, so many cases on it. Really wanted to cover it in straight from support, so thanks so much for doing that for us, Justin. Um, the last topic we're going to cover is how can I get a mirrored part in SOLIDWORKS? And I'm actually going to go through a few different ways we can get mirrored geometry. I'm going to talk about when we get mirrored geometry, how we can get mirrored geometry if we're just working in a sketch. So what if I have a sketch and I need mirrored geometry from that? How are some easy ways to get mirrored geometry sketch? I'm going to use a feature that I've actually talked about before, but it's cool, so I'm going to talk about it again. Um, what about a part? What if I want to mirror a part and get maybe a left hand or right hand side mirror of that part? Are there features that I can use to do that? 
Or what if I want to mirror a feature? What if I just want to mirror a feature that's inside of a part? How can I get that to happen? And then finally, how do I mirror a bunch of parts in an assembly and how can I get those to look differently? What if some of them need to be right hand size, but some of them just need to flip over to the other side? I don't need a left hand version of a screw, for example. How can I get that to happen? I'm going to tackle all of these going through in this exercise. So let's go and open up SOLIDWORKS. So this is my cool little bracket that has weird shapes cut out of it just because I want to be able to show you guys all of this in one concise part. So here's my bracket and I'm looking at it and I want to put a keyhole in here. I'm going to need to have a keyhole right there. So I'm going to do my control eight to flip it there and I'm just going to start a sketch. And for the sketch geometry, I want to put in my keyhole, but I remember that it's actually like a half and half split. I know what my keyhole needs to look like. It needs to look like this and it's really split in half. I don't want to have to draw all those lines twice. So what I'm going to do is go to tools, sketch tools. And actually, first, I'm going to create the side that it needs to mirror from. So I'm going to create a center line. So just a line going straight through the center. Easy enough. And I'm going to go to tools sketch tools and dynamic mirror. It asked me, what do I want to dynamically mirror about? Well, I want to dynamically mirror about this guy. And let's see what that gives me. So I'm going to start by drawing my little. Keyhole things, so I'm going to do that there. And I'm going to hang this guy down. Go down here. And. End it there. And I have. My nice symmetric part, I don't have to worry about lines growing and shrinking with each other. All of the geometry stays mirrored. So it's just a really easy way to get my part created. And then I can go in and throw in. Some dimensions real quick. There we have it. I've got it all nice and mirrored. That was really simple to make. I didn't have to worry about saying that this line and this line have to be equal and this line and this line have to be equal or this one and this one. It just figured it all out from the dynamic mirror so I can really easily just go in. And make my. Through all extruded cut. And I've got my hole there. All right, so I have it there. I need it over here as well. How do I get it to go over there? Well, this is going to be a feature pattern, so I just hit the drop down under my linear pattern and I can get mirror. You can also search for it in the tools, but go to mirror. It says, okay, what do I want to mirror about? Well, I have a plane going right through the middle of my part easily enough. And then I just want to mirror that last cut feature. So that was cut extrude seven. And that was easy enough. Let's look at some of the other options we have in terms of our mirror. I could also mirror the face. So notice I mirror that face over there. I can mirror face features going in there. Since it is a cut feature, I'm going to mirror the whole cut and go through. And if I wanted to, I can mirror an entire body. So let's say I only drew half of this bracket and want to mirror the whole guy over there. That's also possible. Check and I have. My little part, so that goes there. OK, what if I need a left hand version of, or a right hand version of this? Because this bracket goes. On the left of my part, it sits there. I need one that looks exactly like it, but on the other side. So like, let's imagine it was flipped over. In order to do this, I can do this directly from the part. I see a lot of people go in and create this part by going into an assembly because they think they have to use an assembly to create this part. We actually have a mirror feature directly within the part. So I just pick the plane that I want to mirror around. In this case, it's that front plane. 
so it would flip over and create the left hand right hand view. And I type in mirror and I get the option for mirror part and remember if you ever don't know where a command is just hit your eyeball there and SOLIDWORKS will tell you that it's an insert mirror part. So I like that it tells me things. The only hint I have on this that is a showstopper that people will get confused about. I've seen people try to do the mirror part right now. I type in mirror. Uh, why is mirror part grayed out? Why can't I click it? You have to select a plane first. So that's the only kind of restriction there when you're going to create the mirrored part. Just click that front plane and then I type in mirrored part. I can flip that over, create the mirror. I can mirror surfaces, planes, axis, all of that information. Green check. And there is my right hand version of that mirrored part. So it's real easy right from with the part. Didn't even have to create an assembly of it or anything along those lines. So that's pretty nice. All right, but what if I've already put this in assembly and you know what? I have some bracket, some screws and stuff I've put in. I don't want to have to do the mirrored part and then put all those pieces back in. Well, I have a solution for you guys too. And this is actually going to answer the question that came in about flipping it over different axes as well. So I saw that question and we're going to get to it in this part. So I've created my bracket and I put it in this assembly and I want the mirrored part to go over here, but I also need to mirror these two little block things that go in here on the other side. I don't want to have to recreate the mirrored part, put in all the mates and then drag these guys in again and put in all their mates. That sounds like a lot of extra work for just getting it copied over there. In that case, we can go up to our assembly and check the option to mirror components. So just like when the mirror feature was under a feature linear pattern, the mirror components is right under the component linear pattern. So I hit component mirror. First thing it's asked me on every one of these mirrors is what am I mirroring about? Well, I have a plane right in the middle that's really helpful for me to create my mirror. And I select what things I want to mirror. So it's going to be this guy, that guy, and that guy. All four of these parts or three of these parts get flipped over to this side and I hit my next button. All right, let's look at some options that I have here. So for each of these parts, I can pick in which direction in which plane these guys get flipped. So for instance, for this guy, it's asking, oh, do you just want to mirror it over the X and then flip it on the Y? Um, probably not the best idea because if you see right here, the little gap is on the wrong side. So it's mirroring over and just kind of rotating it around. This isn't what I want to happen. So this would be like if I took this part and just moved it, same looking part and moved it and flipped it over there. That's not what I want it to look like it happens. Instead, I can go through these options, create the opposite hand version. Now that little cut isn't in the wrong place and it's adjoining that piece right there. What about these guys? They really just do need to be rotated around. So I can pick my bracket pieces here. I just take a look. So this says it's going to be mirrored along the plane going onto the X, so flipped over to this side, and then rotated. So kind of like I said, it flips around here. That's perfect for me. The screws look the same. I'm just kind of turning them around. So that's exactly what I need on these sides. This mirrored on the X. I also have some other options and let's take a look at what they look like. So this is X mirrored and Y mirrored. So what that means is I have inside of my little part. This little tombstone looking guy is sitting inside my part. Not the right solution for this, but it may be on other parts that you're mirroring. This is almost the same except for this one flips it upside down and I think this was the the question was about that we had thrown in so it's definitely possible just not what we want to happen in this situation <clears throat> and this one's kind of like a combination of these two 
a left hand right hand part would work, but it looks exactly the same as a mirrored part. This is easier. I don't have to create a second part. So I hit next. It asks me what I want to name this. I'm just going to add mirror. Or I could add right side bracket and hit green check. Now I have all those parts mirrored over. It knows that these four parts are just the same part. They're just in a different orientation. And it knows that this part and this part are two separate, completely different parts. One's a right-hand side and one's a left-hand side. So my bill of materials would account for that. So it would account for the fact that all four of these are the same part, but these two parts are completely different. And then we have our big base in the middle. So that's the four methods we have. I actually have a bonus method for you guys. So bonus method. So I created the left hand, right hand side there, but I already created the drawing of my left bracket. I created a nice drawing here. It has all of the dimensions that I need. And if we're being honest, the only views that are different and the only thing different about this drawing from the right hand side to the left hand side is the fact that these two views will be flipped around. I don't want to have to recreate all of my drawing dimensions and all the drawing views for something that's really just these two guys looking through a mirror. We have the solution for you. So I'm going to right click and edit that sheet format. Edit the sheet format, create a new sheet. I'm just going to let it pick a default sheet format. Sometimes it loses mine. So I have the same sheet and I'm just going to copy all of these views. And put them into this view. Sometimes they get moved around a little bit. That's OK. And like I said, the only thing different between these two drawings is that these two are going to be flipped. So all I have to do is click on them and say, I want them to be mirrored. Got a mirror view there on this guy. There. And now I've easily created the drawing for my right bracket without having to draw, drag the other part into there. And it's just showing the dimensions for both sides and people can see what they look like. So it's just a little quick way to create that drawing in the situation where it looks exactly the same and you just want it to be shown on a drawing in its different dimensions. All right, so we learned how to do it in a sketch, a feature, a part, an assembly, and then we threw in the extra drawing bonus episode for this. So we can create mirror geometry in a myriad of ways. SOLIDWORKS. So I really hope you guys check out some of those settings and I hope you guys enjoyed this segment. Thank you guys so much. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us to support at support with all of your support questions if you're a CATI customer. I hope you guys come back again for next month's episode of Straight From Support and Justin, thanks so much for joining me. Yep, thanks Heather.